It's hard to pry yourself away from the pressures of today's booming world, caught up in shackles difficult for most of us to break away from. But located in the middle of pristine nature, somewhere between Chennai and Bangalore, lies a house reminiscent of comfortable old-school living by someone who's clearly cracked the code to happiness. And it is here, in the middle of nowhere, you'll find South India's only producer of tomato wine. I'm Sujata Damagri. I'm 85 and I make tomato wine. I'm the only person in India that's making it. Organic is the name of the game. Add a little passion to that and you have the perfect recipe to good living. That's her life here away from the concrete jungle. With nothing but nature and the sound of birds around and not to mention picture perfect frames everywhere you turn. This truly is the art of pure living. You're in a hamlet of the main village of Devarai Sumudra, which has the panchayat. It's about a hundred kilometers away from Bangalore. Always wanted a farm life. Never thought my dreams would come true almost way after half a century of my life. I wanted to get away from the rat race in Bangalore and all the pollution. Found this place, there was nothing here. Everyone thought it was, you know, a crazy idea of mine. But I think I just saw the beauty in the place. So, came out here and built. I started building in 98. Took two years to complete the building because I didn't have ready cash. I was working, so every month, whatever I earned, I would sort of bring it and put it in. In 2002, I had decided, you know, that was going to be my last year uh, in May. And um, so June 1st, 2002, I moved to Lock, Stock and Barrel here. This is the second largest tomato growing region in India, the first one being Sangli, Maharashtra. And when I first came here, there was always so much of tomatoes being grown and thrown around because no market. And then eventually I found there were about three farmers that I knew in this area who committed suicide. The families were in a real bad state after this. And I found, felt really sad about it. I felt I could, there was something I could do to prevent it because I was into making wine and I was making wine with tomatoes even when I came here. And people who had tasted it said it was good wine. I had three or four Frenchmen who came. They were all from Burgundy and they came to spend the weekend. And so the first evening I offered them wine and they said, um, I said, it's homemade wine. I said, definitely. He said, we are Frenchmen, we'll drink wine. So I served them the wine. I went inside to get the snacks. And when I came out, there was a heated argument among the three of them. And they said, you know, ma'am, please don't take us to be rude people, but none of us can come to an agreement on what type of white grapes you have used for making this wine. So I told them it wasn't white grapes, it was tomatoes, and they just couldn't believe it. And they said, with this quality of wine and this know-how, why have you not gone commercial? about three years to get the license and um, learnt a lot of things on the way. People tried every game, every rule in the book to try and get me to pay and I said no. So finally I told 
the then district commissioner, I said, see, this is my last visit to you. I'm not coming anymore. But if this summer there are any suicides, I said, I'm calling a press conference. So a week later, he called me and congratulated me and said, please come and collect your license. This being a very new concept, it was very difficult for people to accept the fact that you can make wine with tomatoes. And even when we kept the wine bottles in some of the stores, I remember going there and, you know, to ask them about the wine. And someone came and asked, and he said, oh, you want the vegetable wine? Wine was just not moving. And then they said, okay, we'll take one box of wine if you give us one box free. Now, this was something I hadn't anticipated. I didn't know this is how the marketing worked. Then when I went to some of the stores, I said, why are you keeping this bottle of wine down? Why don't you keep it up on the shelf? He said, oh, ma'am, for every bottle that's there, you have to pay a monthly rent of 5,000 rupees. Again, we had not, you know, thought about that. Didn't know about it, actually. So I said, this is not fair. I lose out completely. The public are unnecessarily being harassed with having to pay more. I said, I'll start my own boutique over here. So I got the license for the boutique, and so I sell it from here. Homemade wine is no new thing. From interesting ingredients to unique techniques passed down generation after generation, we've seen a lot of them. But if you think this is your typical homemade wine, well, you'd be wrong. <laughs>